Good evening and welcome to the Webster Zoning Board of Appeals meeting for May 9th, 2023. Uh, this evening we have two tabled items, one scheduled matter and uh, two administrative matters uh, to address. We do have a uh, full board this evening. Uh, welcome to uh, two new members that are stepping in for two of our um, members who are out this evening. Uh, call roll. Mr. Newtown. Here. Mr. Barone. Here. Mrs. Bolo? Here. Mr. Centola? Here. Mr. Short? Here. Mr. DeMarco? Mr. Ortiz? Here. Mr. Ortiz? Here. We do have uh, proof of legal publication for this evening's matters. Developing this for um, 
for any of the uses that were permitted by code. Uh, Brian McKinnon is here tonight. Uh, he has been working with this property, representing this property, what, 15 years? Something like that. Um, on behalf of the property owner, uh, Evan Patel is our engineer, and Mike Hay from Quattro Development that's developing the uh, Take 5 uh, oil change operations in our area is here tonight as well. So, um, <coughs> as I said, it's 1.25 acres. Um, it is the last remaining piece in a fully developed area. It's a mixed-use area. I think you guys know it very well. It is literally just a little bit across the street here. So you know there's a kind of mixed zoning in this area. The property is owned MC, um, but we have several zoning districts kind of surrounding it as well and a mixture of different types of uses and development. We've got a bank here, we've got self-storage, um, we've got some apartments, we've got you know, large retail across the street, we have a number of auto-related uses that have popped up along Ridge Road, and uh, we've got some um, offices, we've got a funeral home, it's just uh, kind of like a melange of different local uh, kinds of uh, uses along the corridor. It's not the heart of the commercial area, but it's not really far from the center. Um, however, there is no traffic signal here, and uh, when Krista came in to uh, get the development approvals for the self-storage, there was a condition put on that approval uh, by the planning board uh, seeking to have access management on Ridge Road and not, not allowing a driveway uh, directly on Ridge Road for this parcel. So the parcel is kind of You've seen the application, so you know, limited in size, we have limited frontage, um, there's really no room for growth, the area around it is developed, it's, it's very small, uh, the K5 oil change is actually uh, an ideal type of a use here because it's a very, very low traffic generator. Not a low traffic generator, but a super low traffic generator. They expect, you know, if they're successful here, you know, 30 to 40 cars is typical for an oil change. So it's a very low traffic use. Um, they can work with this shared uh, access with Roosters. Um, Roosters is present here tonight. They came out to the planning board. We presented a concept plan to the planning board a couple months ago. Uh, they came out to support that application. Uh, the planning board did issue a favorable letter of recommendation, which you probably have in your packet and have a chance to see. Uh, I think we're making some kind of cosmetic changes and addressing um, some things that the planning board brought up before we go back there, but we cannot proceed with this process unless we secure a use variance to allow the use. So uh, the application before you um, addresses all of the standards and criteria, the big one being the financial hardship. As you know, uh, we have to demonstrate that the property is not cannot generate a reasonable return for the uses permitted by the code. You're familiar with the MC uh, district uh, list of permitted uses. They're primarily retail and office uses. Uh, the property has been on the market for quite a few years. There's literally been no interest in this parcel. Um, it, it is the remaining piece of what was an irregular shape parcel, so the self-storage really couldn't use it. They went back in the, uh, in the larger, I think it's like a five-acre piece back here, maybe a little more than five acres. Connected right over here, and there's just a small frontage piece. Um, as far as the uh, use variance criteria, um, we have provided you some information addressing the financial hardship. Uh, Brian uh, did submit a letter. We submitted not only the marketing items <coughs> on this piece for the last, I think, two or three years, but we gave you some of the information that you saw previously. Um, because the financial hardship of the larger piece um, has always been an issue. They just didn't have a user at the time for this piece. Um, but they have had it on the market. They've had it on the market without any limit as to the use, uh, potential use of the property. They haven't had any price on it, so they haven't priced it out of the market. It's just been out there and available for anybody interested in building anything on the site. Um, I think you're probably aware that construction costs are high. There's lots of vacant space. So the type of users that are interested in building a new, uh, a new store on a relatively small parcel, not on a corner, not on a traffic signal, without a driveway, not in the kind of commercial heart of the town, um, is really limited. So um, the only property, um, the only use that's uh, expressed an interest and that's actually come to contract is 
for the development of the Take 5 oil change, which is why we're here tonight. Um, as far as uh, the other hardship uh, documentation that we're required to provide you is in dollars and cents proof. Um, the property owner has been paying taxes, insurance, carrying costs related to the property, so we've given you those numbers um, in the application. Um, let's see, the Okay, the uniqueness of the property, um, again, I think we went into the fact that it doesn't have a traffic signal, it has you know, specifically a condition prohibiting a driveway. Uh, so all of those kinds of physical aspects of the property, those characteristics are unique to the property and those are essentially the limiting factors uh, that create the financial hardship. Obviously, if this was a larger parcel uh, or something different, we, or it was on a traffic signal, it would be a completely different matter. But we have, you know, limited size, limited frontage, no driveway, uh, you know, not a central location. Um, we might be across from some large-scale retail, but we kind of have like an interesting co-tenant mix along the corridor, a little hodgepodge there. Um, so uh, this seems to be kind of the perfect fit. Uh, the character of the neighborhood, are we going to alter the essential character of the neighborhood? Use or not? Probably the most significant. Um, benefit of this use to the corridor is that it is a low traffic use. It's a daytime operation. <coughs> you know, they operate basically like office hours or you know, retail hours. Uh, the hours that can be laid out in the application for you. Uh, let's see. These are the typical hours that could be adjusted depending on kind of local demand and management. Um, 7 a.m. to 8 p.m. Monday to Friday, 7 a.m. to 7 p.m. Saturday, 9 to 5 on Sunday. Uh, and like I said, they can be modified. They don't do heavy repairs, they don't paint cars, they provide very limited services. Um, oil changes, tire pressure checks, topping off some fluid, fluids, cooling exchanges, uh, air and cabin filter replacements, and wiper blade replacements. Uh, they describe themselves as kind of an upscale operation in that there isn't a waiting room. The customer just drives in, it stays in their car, they get their service, and they move on. This is a small building. It's 1,600 square feet, approximately, with three bays. Uh, the orientation of the building is uh, deliberate. We want to create kind of the most attractive, least impactful um, view of the building. So we put kind of the shorter uh, side of the building at the street. Um, we did, uh, at the request of the planning board, kind of spruce it up, and we're working on you know landscaping and architecture and that kind of stuff that um, the planning board will Know, focus on all those details. So we want to make this look as attractive as possible. We want it to blend in. But as far as the use, the intensity is about as low an in, in intensity of the use as you could find. Um, so that should not alter the character of the neighborhood in any way. And we're going to design this. You know, it's a brick building. It's not their standard building. They've, you know, already upgraded it to a brick building to fit with the character of the neighborhood and some of the other more recent development. They want to do quality, you know, really quality building here so that has already been included, and again, we'll continue with the planning board should we uh, secure the use variance uh, from this board. Um, and whether the alleged hardship is self-created, again, it arises from the actual physical characters, characteristics of the property, the location of the property, the limited size, and uh, kind of limited interest in a property that just doesn't have those things, those characteristics that you know companies are looking for when they want to invest in building a new building. It's expensive to build a new building, so. When these companies are coming and looking for a site, it's got to have all of the requirements, the traffic signal, the corner location, you know, all those kinds of things that, that they look for. So that is our application in a nutshell. Um, as I said, there is a letter of recommendation from the planning board. Uh, the application was also submitted to county planning. They also sent back uh, the response to the referral. There were no comments or issues of concern. I understand that the PRC has not issued any comments, but we'll look at this again um, in connection with the planning board application. Uh, let's see if I missed anything. We have quite a bit of material that I submitted in support of the hardship, but I don't know if you have any questions about it. I'm going to stop there and see kind of where the board might want to go. Uh, yeah, uh, so a couple of questions. Sure. I mean, you, um, <laughs> you referenced the size a couple of times. In, in terms of the size, could, could you compare it to like the Valvoline 
or minor key, which I believe is uh, two, two to three parcels over. Um, I, I, is, is there a representative from Take Five here? Is there anyone that's familiar with the operations of the building that can step up and answer some questions? I'm familiar, um, certainly. I, I do not work for Take Five. I'm with Foster Development. My name is Mike Haig, and I'm happy to answer any questions I can. Yeah, if you just to dive a little bit deeper in terms of how does this size compare to some of the competitors in the area? There's a new one on the corner of uh, Jackson and Holt. Uh, I'm sorry, Jackson and Ridgero. Uh, there's uh, Valvoline down in what we would call West Webster on Empire. Mm -hmm. uh, there's a mining key, which I believe is in the uh, Goodwill Plaza area. Correct, I think that's mine. If I'm not mistaken. It's certainly Mavis. significantly <laughs> smaller than Mavis. Um, yeah. We've done actually one Mavis project uh, in Pennsylvania, and they, that one we did was around 4,000 feet. Um, they also, you know, and with, with regards to Balboin, they are similar sized buildings, but Balboin offers uh, significantly more services. Uh, Take by the oil change really wants to be a five to ten minute stay in your car limited service. So there's no transmission. But, uh, so with regards to, I guess, nuisance for neighbors and stuff like that, it's as minimal as possible and they run a very clean operation. The building size is similar to a Jiffy Loop or a Valvoline. I do believe Valvoline is around 2,000 feet, so 400 square feet less than a Valvoline. They're a prototype. I'm not exactly sure right. of specific building, so but the Valvoline prototype. To the Jiffy Loop or to the Valvoline is what we're... Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Three bay, yeah. Three bay, yeah. Um, help me understand the uh, the adjoining parcel. That it, it, if I'm not sure, is this being? Um, you're only going to take 1.3 acres of this, isn't it? A total of 7.1. No, the the 7.1. So originally. There is a map that shows the. the yes. Pole. Yes, that was. So this is a one and a quarter, and this is the remainder of that. This right. is what was developed for the self storage. Oh, that's right. Gotcha. Okay, I was confused by the numbers. The reason I put it in there is because they really have been marketing this, and even though it was connected to that, it may as well have been two separate parcels. You know, it was right. barely connected. No, I understand. I was confused by the numbers in your letter. It's not like you could build anything over this. Um, could somebody dive a little bit deeper into the um, marketing that's been done? When was this originally listed? Uh, what was some of the interest that? Um, the table did not come to the table. How long has it been listed? I'm Brian McKinnon. I'm with uh, Crystal Development. We've been associated with the site uh, for 14 years um, from the original uh, construction of the uh, Webster Green Apartments in the rear and then all the way through to today. Um, it's been extensively marketed. We have site signage, broker letters, networking, word of mouth. Um, it's a unique piece of property, as you well know, as the chairman mentioned, it was part of seven acres originally, and it was, as Betsy mentioned, theoretically two parcels, even though they were one tax parcel. So we've been before the board uh, a couple of years ago for the self storage facility for a similar reason. We had no frontage. It was kind of this piece was sort of connected, but it really didn't do anything for it. So um, we own the self-storage, so from a marketing perspective, we have virtually no interest in that because it was land locked in the back. So we, uh, our group owns it, and we have a contract with Life Storage as the management company. So that was sort of how we self-marketed it, if you know what I mean. We created our own demand by doing the self-storage because there was demand in the area. Um, it's actually just for what it's worth. It's the board was involved in that project a couple years ago. We're at pace right now where we anticipated after a full year, and we're only six months into it since we got our CEO in October, so it was a great decision. Clearly, the, the community has embraced the location. Um, we continue to market this, and uh, <coughs> until uh, Mike's group came along and said, we've got the perfect use, we don't need everything that Betsy said the property doesn't have, um, we were just Hoping someone would come along and show interest in it, quite frankly. 
Yeah, it looks like I, I read about um, the carrying cost over the past three years, 46,000, no, I can't find it, um, 45,000 in real estate taxes, 12,007 in liability insurance, and 21,500, and I guess that's internal crystal marketing and, and trying to move this site kind of shoe leather effort, correct? Yeah, I mean, we've, it's been subdivided away from the large seven acre parcel, so, you know, going back, we've been carrying the seven acres <coughs> until recently for many, many years, paying the taxes, liability insurance, marketing, overhead, a lot of, a lot of expense. Uh, for the record, I don't have it in front of me. Josh, do you mind uh, just <coughs> highlighting some of the allowed uses? Sure. <coughs> Got it. Call it book handy. Yeah. So, permitted uses in the MC district include things like appliance sales, bar, tavern, or cocktail lounge, um, a daycare facility commercial print shop, drugstore, uh, funeral home, floor sales, grocery store, medical and dental clinics, uh, office, machine sales and service, uh, restaurants, variety stores, and communication towers. Thank you. How many employees do you anticipate? <clears throat> Typically four employees, uh, three to four, depending on demand and depending on the day. So uh, one manager and then typically one employee per day. Per day. And an ideal day would be to cycle through 40? <coughs> 50, 50, 50, that's good. Above average would be 50. And yeah, again, it's only oil, which um, is a, a much faster process. I guess I would just, I, I would highlight that the, the intensity of this use is much less than some of the um, allowed uh, uses that Mr. Artuso just mentioned. That was a major contention for the development down the street. People said, well, we'd rather see a fast food restaurant. Fast food has hundreds of cars a day, whereas the development only had, you know, 20, 30 cars a day, 40. So, Jeff, Jeff. Was, it, was it Jeff Lee on the corner of Jackson Ridge? Yeah. That's okay. But the point, the point is the, that uh, the neighbors were saying they want the traffic. And this operation actually had less traffic than a fast food restaurant, which is a lot of that So the, the traffic was an issue. Yeah, this site really can't fit. They can't accommodate a fast food restaurant. We were talking, this is a, a very small building with a very small parking need. You know, if you talk about a fast food restaurant, you're talking about drive through lanes, a tremendous amount of parking. It's completely different. And they, and they all want a traffic signal. And to bear that out, I go by, by that intersection of Jackson Bridge a lot. Very few cars. So what they're telling us is in fact the truth. In terms of uh, noise generation, uh, are there any air tools that we use to well, the doors be down when the air tools are used? Yes, typically the doors are down when they're doing their work. I, I believe there might be a compressor for tire pressure, um, but, or for inflating tires, but other than that, the doors should be shut during operation. We're not doing tire rotation, right? So it's, there's really no impact wrenches or anything. Correct. There's no, there's no tire rotation. There's no brakes. There's no mufflers. There's no. It's oil change. It's, a, it's just oil change, wipers, and air uh, cabin filters.
business for long term is, is uh, you mentioned that there are vacant buildings out there, so is, you know, I'm assuming you guys plan on being there long term. Yeah, absolutely. And you know, with specifically like tenants like Mavis, they don't necessarily consider them apples to apples competitors. Sure. Um, yes, a lot of companies offer oil changes, but not a, um, Take Five feels they differentiate themselves because they, it's the only one, and I can speak for only myself, I really don't like going into those weird little waiting rooms, and you can just stay in your car and listen to a podcast. So that's kind of how they view, they view themselves as the next generation oil change that uh, will entice a lot of customers. The other question I had, um, the site plan is, I see your, you have a, the 50 foot setback, um, and you have a 75 foot setback, and that's all based on the MC. Is that, um, are those fixed? I know that's per our code, but is that, looking at an aerial, it looks a lot further closer to the road than I think is that ESL at the bank that is uh, adjacent to it than uh, roosters. I'm, you know, I'll let Evan speak to the engineering, but I do know there's some significant topographic issues with the site. There's that kind of nice hill, hill yeah. that is there, yeah. and, and the further um, like south you move, it, <coughs> you run into some issues and with the layout and stormwater management, um, but I'll certainly share with that too. So with that too, with the Evan get fell from Costage, um, the thing, ESL, you know, they had the double stacked parking in front of it, which kind of pushed the building back. I'm sure they would have been more forward. Um, you know, the other thing we were looking at, and we did meet with roosters, um, you know, we're kind of looking at line of, line of sites. Um, the bank has some significant landscape and trees, long ridge. Um, I, we, I modeled the site. Um, we have you know, rendering showing the trees, you know, from the intersection and basically everything. There's no view until you get past the existing trees there. You get, <coughs> excuse me, you get past the trees there, and then your line of sight cuts, you know, it doesn't hit our building and hits Brewster's, um, which is also not <coughs> So, you know, that with being further set back, um, offsetting the, the entrance so that we don't create a lined up entrance, which then creates a four way stop, which then kind of confuses everybody, I would feel, in this situation. Um, roosters can operate with the vehicles, vehicular circulation as is, and the customers with low intense use um, can turn left into. Five and, and I'm just going to say this because I was over at Brewster's before I came over here tonight. I, don't know <laughs> I mean, there are people on bicycles, there's people everywhere. I mean, having a nice, low intensity use sharing the driveway, I think, is an extra plus because of the name. So, you require no uh, area variances. Obviously, you're just coming in for the use variance. Um, you're not going to come back for a sign package. I think the signage is code compliant. Yeah, we anticipate all of the signage to be code compliant. You said it. <laughs> I anticipate. I'm I just telling you, it's not a I'm just telling you to answer. I know. <laughs> I, when, we, when I talk to our clients. Oh, now he's, he's shuffling. <laughs> I'm not shuffling. I'm simply saying I see how this works. I had our signage vendor say to render a code compliant package. All right. Um, this meeting is open to anyone wishing to speak for or against this application. I, I would certainly welcome Brewsters if they're willing to come up and, and speak um, from their perspective as this being their immediate <coughs> neighbor. My name is Mary Amato. I am the owner of Brewsters. Um, we would love to have them in there. We've been staring at a jerk for how many years? <laughs> And as I said, it is not going to be high traffic, and it's more daytime that they're going to have people going in and out. It's nighttime that we're insane over there. You've all been there. I can see it. <laughs> it would be nice to see an actual building and not a 
empty lot. We walk from the neighbors. Do you anticipate using their parking lot at night when they're not open? Um, I can't stop my customers. They park <laughs> on my front lawn. They park over on Life Storage. They park up and down Ridge Road. I suspect the customers will go over there. I hope you won't kick them out. If they're closed, I... <laughs> yeah, they won't go during the day. Yeah. Please, they park on the driveway and jump over the fence because they can't walk from the parking lot. Yeah. And I doubt we'll hear their compressors because ours are so loud we'll never be able to hear them. <laughs> Seriously. So, we would welcome them. Perfect. Thank you. You're welcome. Thank you for coming to the lacrosse game, Austin. Oh, you were there last night? I helped you vote. Oh, you're the one that helped me. <laughs> <laughs> I was. <laughs> I didn't know I was. You're pushing. <laughs> Thank you again. <laughs> uh, okay. Anyone else uh, wish to speak for or against this application? Okay. Seeing no one, we're going to return the discussion back to the board. Uh, we're opening public comment. Pursuant to NYCRR Section 617 of the Environmental Code, I'll make a motion as an unlisted action for this application. Certainly. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Yes, sir. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Seller, developer, 
Um, the marketing efforts were um, site signage, which we had on the property for all until we uh, had our contract with Quattro. Uh, outreach that we have through uh, just our network of brokers and real estate leasing agents that we deal with through our development business, which is a lot of commercial retail office properties in the portfolio. Uh, word of mouth. Um, typically, for what it's worth, as you probably well know along the ridge, site selectors uh, go by signage. They go with demographics, traffic count, DOT, and uh, the signage on the property is really what drives people to the location. Um, and that was something that we had on the property uh, right up until Quattro uh, put it under contract. Success, and that's when we did the life storage facility and did it for ourselves, which created this parcel. Um, Crystal Development's website. Excuse me, Richard Ellis, that was, though, that was with respect to the larger parcel, right? Not this specific parcel. No, it, it was for all seven acres, and we had zero luck. And, right. So, and, we, and with respect to with respect to this particular parcel, how long has this been marketed for? Not, not the overall parcel, but just where in the Wisdomian letter, and it, it's the remaining parcel has remained on the market for the past several years. Does that mean it? I guess I don't know what that means. On the market for several years as it relates to the parcel. So I, I understand the distinction. Um, we received site plan approval from uh, the town of Webster and subdivision approval of the seven acres that allowed us to develop the self-storage facility. So from that moment on, we now had the ability to market this parcel by itself for the first time. So he's asking what, what date? Uh, sometime in 21, maybe? I don't know. So let's say two years. Okay, so the duration of the marketing in two years for this particular parcel. And the but the carrying cost of eighty thousand dollars is set forth over a three year period. So should that really be a two year period of carrying cost? Yeah, I, you know, I, I apologize, but I I am I'm giving numbers to Betsy that we get from our accounting department, so I mean it, could there have been an overlap of six months? I, I don't know. I mean, it's tens of thousands of dollars that okay. carry the program. Mr. Newsom, in the second paragraph total, it's about $80,000. I'll be at that 36 month it sounds like the applicant is closer to 24 months. Well, I, I guess before we, let me just clarify the CBRE letter from November 2nd, 2020. Is this specific to? Uh, a, is this about the cutoff date? I believe, yeah, the subdivision took place at some point during right. 2021. I, I, I can tell you, I have the planning board approval. It's May 2021. Okay, but the variance, I think this was provided to the zoning board. It was the tail end of 2020. That would be correct. Which would be, the, hence the dates of the letters. So that's when. Yes. The process started. Yes. Right. That would make sense. It's been a few years. Yeah. So I think what we've concluded is that it could be two years and three months, two years and six months. I mean, in terms of these estimates that were provided, I was really looking at them as estimates. Well, they are because you pay taxes every year, right? For the expenses that you provide. Get back to the board. 
to determine. I just want I want the board to be clear on, on what the facts are. And in order to prove an unnecessary hardship, the applicant must demonstrate to our board that each and every permitted use under the zoning regulation for that district where the property is located is one that the applicant cannot realize a reasonable return, provided that the lack of return is substantial has demonstrated by confident financial evidence. So that's, that's why I want to be clear that the presentation isn't as big as the board can lock into the facts, whether two years is enough or not enough, or you know, whether um, 50 or $60,000 is enough to make it worth your while. Okay. Thank you. 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 Thank
right? Mm -hmm. they're, even though they are connected, if you look at what the original parcel was, they really are like two separate parcels just kind of like tied together. So that's why I gave you, I gave you extra hardship evidence that maybe I didn't need, and I don't, didn't mean to confuse you, but I really just want to show that if somebody wanted to put a Taco Bell on this front, they could have done this seven years ago, six years ago, it's been on the market. And I can tell you that other brokers have talked to me and said that they looked at different sites and you know, picked other locations that I have probably been in front of this board or at least the planning board on for different um, you know, national retailers. And this site has been passed over. Um, so that is why you have kind of more information than maybe you needed. I didn't mean to confuse anybody. And I'm happy to go through the list. I mean, you go through the list of permitted uses, we already did. Okay. I was going to say, many of those uses, the parcel is just by definition too small. Right. It certainly can't handle the traffic and the parking. And then some of them, like a funeral home, there's a funeral home a few doors down. You know, some of these specific retail uses are very specialized and, you know, I think everybody knows, it's kind of known that it's tough to find the retail right now with all the online kind of competition for sales and, and whatnot. So, if you have questions about any particular use, I'm happy to speak to it. I don't think it would be to go through, but there, <coughs> and I think a lot of it is actually common sense. So, just stepping back to the to this specific site, you've got site signage, broker letter, word of mouth. What bubbled to the surface as a result? Of that? Just specifically those reach outs. What bubbled to the surface? Let's say it's what two and a half. <laughs> Just say they both. That's it. Correct? Correct. Yeah. You know, we've seen this before. Ridge Road is the best Webster has. And we've seen the experience after the experience after. There just doesn't seem to be the interest that we'd like to see. Would it be great for everybody that's clamoring to buy a front end Ridge Road? But we're not seeing it. This is, this is a unique parcel, as you, as you well know, Betsy's particularly. And I think, if I could just say one thing relative to our relationship with Roosters, I mean, we're neighbors. We own the life stores, and we work hand in hand with them to create an access through the existing driveway that didn't hinder their operation. And you probably know that the 50 feet of frontage that we have on the ridge where our monument sign is for life storage. Think about how much that exacerbated our issue for the last 10 years in and of itself. We only have 50 feet of frontage, and we have this massive driving range in back. So there's been a real history here, and I'd just like to say one thing, uh, if I could. Um, I was there when we developed Webster Green Apartments, so for all of you that have been here forever, I think we've come a long way. I mean, we've got a beautiful apartment community that's done well. We sold land to Conifer, who built a, an affordable senior community in the back. We were able to put a nice storage facility in there that has proven to be of great demand from the town. Um, we've got a great neighbor in Brewster's, and we've now got another opportunity here with Quantra. So we're seeing this as the culmination of almost 15 years of redeveloping a very large and awkward piece of property uh, in, the, in the town. Could you help me understand next to the, I guess it would be directly west of Brewster's, that there's a vacant parcel there. Is that owned by? No, that, that's a great question. That was sold to, um, I, I, I probably shouldn't say that person's name, if Josh wants to, he can, but that was sold to a, um, a, a party that was going to do a medical building there. We had nothing to do with it. They wanted to buy some land from us. We made a transaction, and that's got to be, oh, that might be six, I don't even know, six, seven, eight years ago. It's been a very long time. We have nothing to do with it. It's their parcel. We did, however, when we did the self-storage facility, and we provided a new driveway to the back, we've given them the ability to tie into our driveway for access. So not for me to say what the town does, but if the town wants to do some traffic management there in the future, or should that parcel ever get developed, we also accommodated that with the town by granting an easement over our driveway to allow access to that property that we no longer own and haven't for years. Thank you. All right, back to the, uh, to the board. With respect to the four key parameters, the applicant cannot generate a reasonable return for permitted uses. Um, any further questions, comments, or thoughts? 
I think the key, they've waited long enough for the ideal client for this parcel to appear, and they need to act on it. Because, like you said, I don't think there's a lot of uses, retail or otherwise, that can make do with a no frontage access along the way road, and based on the size of the parcel, that would be major economic feasible. So I think uh, whatever stars align, they found the absolute right client for this parcel. If, if we act on this, I, I, I'd probably uh, suggest that we, we uh, adopt uh, page two of uh, the letter dated March 22nd, 2023. And not regurgitate that, knowing that there probably is some flex in the numbers that you provided based on that window of when this parcel clearly was a singular parcel. Understood. Are we in agreement? With respect to the alleged hardship related to the property is unique and does not apply to a substantial portion of the district or neighborhood. I mean, certainly the uh, the parcel is in a great location. I think it's a great, great location, um, but it is unique in terms of its footprint, square footage, the. Elevation change, I believe there's a pretty significant elevation change towards the back of that property. I think somebody else mentioned it earlier. Bridge road, lack of bridge road access. And that in concept is a great location, but lacking bridge road access without a shared driveway. Whether or not it's truly a deterrent, but if you're going in and you're going to start the parcel, I think that and it's not big, so there's there's not a lot you can do with just over an acre of space. The request of variance of granted will not alter the essential character of the neighborhood. I mean, we provided a few variances in this neighborhood over the past handful of years, uh, which allow this type of use most recently, as we've noted, just on the corner of Jackson and Bridge. Which, by the way, I think that building blends in very nicely with the neighborhood, and uh, they landscaped it very well. And I think it's a compliment to the Canadian uh, National across the street. You got any comments around the character of the neighborhood? I think um, knowing what the character is. Uh, the hardship is. Years in terms of 
what you try to do, or what you potentially envision for that parcel, uh, the market reach uh, that was listed in the CBRE letter for the period of 2014 to 2018, and the allowed, specific to the targeted allowed uses, and you had no traction on that. To me, it carries over to this as well, even though it's a shorter window after you set your bid off that other piece from what's So I just wanted to go on the record for that. Related to the hardship, with that, anyone willing to, anybody uh, willing to uh, make a motion? Um, do we do make a motion and we'll approve this once again? I'm going to recommend we adopt the um, items two, three, I'm sorry, one, two, three, and four uh, of the letter from Woods, Polia, Peelman, dated March 22nd, 2023. And the findings and comments related to the four key criteria for use there. Mr. Short? Aye. Mrs. Bowell? Aye. Mr. Barone? Aye. Mr. Newtown? Aye. Mr. Santola? Aye. All right. Uh, you've got uh, your variance of conditions apply. Must have been on the circuit. One year meaningful construction is set to expire one year from this evening. And obviously, all of the steps that you need to uh, proceed with the uh, planning process. Thank you. Thank you. And next item is uh, table item number two, Red Barn Farms, 375 Webster Road. Redbird Farms. Uh, wait, 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 we're going to read this into the record first. Redbird Farms, located at 375 Webster Road, applicant Raja A is requesting a special permit to allow a seasonal use of an existing barn as a special event space in the 3.85 acre parcel, giving SPL number 050.03-1-34.2, located in an R1 single family residential district under section 350-103 of the Code of the Town of Webster. Uh, Mr. Chairman and members of the board, as you know, I have submitted uh, plans and application for material requesting uh, approval for a special use permit within a development where we live at 375 Webster Road called Red Bottom Farms 375. This specific existing structure bond is shown on the plans made part of this application, which each one of you do have. The existing bond will be used for special events such as weddings, anniversaries, and charitable events, etc. It will be used seasonally only from April 1st through October 31st. A copy of the client's rental contract, which is extensive, is attached to the application which I did provide all of the board members. Please see the highlighted areas of the client's agreement, which will clarify most questions the members of the board might have for its safe operation, not only for the clients, but for the surrounding neighbors. The bond is for rent only, and the area around the bond is cited on the map, which I presented, which each of the board members do have, to accommodate 20 vehicles on the property itself. No cars are permitted to park by contract on the agreement on Route 250 at all. They're not allowed. Um, additional parking is made, will be made available by the client off-site. Um, they can 
provide shuttle service for their customers if they so desire. But again, absolutely no cars will be permitted on Route 250. Um, since we started renting it in 2019, since then we've only had five events there. Two in 2019, one was a graduation party, which uh, my neighbors across the street actually um, attended. Um, then we had a wedding, there were 65 people at the wedding, and then of course 2020 we had COVID. 2021 and 22 we had uh, three other events, they were all charity events. The first one was Gigi's Playhouse, which is a Down Syndrome organization. <coughs> which takes care of uh, Down Syndrome children. They have a charity fundraiser there on our property, which needless to say, my wife and I uh, did not charge. The Webster Kiwanis Club also had um, a special uh, event there for uh, special children. Um, they had a pizza night there um, that was held. Um, also, there was a um, event held for um, Hocus Pocus for those challenged children where uh, my wife and I put up a, a large screen so they can watch Hocus Pocus and they can dress up in their costumes. And um, the third one was Troop 333, was a, which is another charity event um, where they had um, a, a, you know pizza night. But that uh, is all the events that we have had since uh, my wife and I decided that we were going to rent out the property. And we have informed um, the um, Lions Club as well as the Rotary or any other charitable event, Veterans of Foreign Wars, if they need to use the property for any type of fundraiser uh, for a charity <coughs> event, they're more than happy to do it at, at, at no charge to, um, to my wife or myself. But the contract that um, we uh, put into place that the very first party that we did have, to be honest with you, there were 65 uh, guests there, and some of them did park on 250. And I realized at that time that that was not going to uh, that was not going to work because if, if I certainly was a neighbor in the area, I certainly wouldn't want the cars lined up on 250, um, which would cause uh, some harm um, to cars passing in or bicycle riders or people that were walking. So. In 2021, my wife and I decided to put an extensive contract um, that the, um, the clients must sign. And as you know, the board has a discretion at any time that contract is not abided by, can um, abort whatever decision that you make today. If you approve it, you can actually avoid the contract. Um, I'm open to any questions that uh, the board might have. State that and if you don't mind, um, I do wear hearing aids, Mr. Sure. Chairman. If you could speak a little bit louder, because I can't turn them up any louder than what they are. I do apologize. If you could just restate how, how many events you had since five, five total? Five, three. Okay. Three of them were for charity, and the other two were paid. And that's since what day? I'm sorry? That since what date again? 2019, there was a wedding and there was a, um, 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 a um, graduation, forgive me. And, and the other three were, you know, uh, charity events. We and didn't no, hold anything for 2023, and I think we didn't do anything for 2022. Because the town asked me this. I mean, if I'm not mistaken, correct? Yeah, 2022, correct? When I found out when the Actually, the the, um, the fire department actually came by, and a uh, very nice gentleman, and um, he was inquiring, so I let him in the barn, so he said, uh, you know, you need a couple of fire extinguishers, so, but he said, Roger, what I would suggest you do, you really have to go before the board and get a special permit. I said, oh, yeah, we would happy to do that. So at that point, my wife and I did shut it down. We didn't do anything for uh, 2022 or 2023 at all. And like I said, it's only from April to October. And um, I would like to tell you that we like to rent it every week, but uh, needless to say, we certainly don't want to party on our property every single week. I mean, so this, we're going to be very, very restrictive um, to how many parties we actually have from September until October. And what, uh, what complaints have we received by the town? Um, 
we have no record of receiving any complaints. You just, you were self-aware that the parking extending on the 250 was going to be an issue. There was no... Oh, actually, yes. Correct. Right. Right. No, there was no, the police were not called, there wasn't reported to the town. No, once we once we had that very first wedding in, in 2019, um, we had about 25, 30 cars actually lined up on 250, and my wife and I said, this is not this is not good. We have to figure out another way to do this. So that's when we decided, um, and after COVID, that uh, the client would have to sign a contract that under no circumstances they can not park a car on 250, or else they'd have to leave the uh, premises immediately. You don't want to put anybody's life in danger. There's a lot of uh, bicycles, a lot of people that walk with their dogs there, and some I want them to walk on 250, because that road is heavily uh, trafficked, especially with um, a lot of motorcycles and trucks. Could you state the occupancy uh, of that building? It's a, what, no more than 85 people. No more than 85 people will fit on their property. We will not allow more than 85 people. The wedding that we did have, there was uh, 65 people. Have you considered adding parking? I see drivers, but I don't. I'm sorry, sir. Have you, have you considered adding some parking space? Are there people parking? Um, actually, if um, I'm not sure if you're very familiar with the property, but it's I, it's such a pic picturesque property. I think I would not want to do any additional parking. I'd rather not have it. I would rather the board tell me, forget about it, don't do it, because it would just ruin the look of the property. For the one day, for 20 cars, it's, it's, it's comfortable and it looks okay. If I added additional parking there, it, it's, uh, my wife and I would never do that. So, the, the contract says 25 cars, um, and I know the property pretty well, it's a beautiful barn, it is a beautiful property. Um, based on the map that you provided and highlighted space of the location of the parking, the parking alongside the driveway, there's a fairly steep uh, decline there. So was the intent to parallel park there? It's one question. And then the area that you're showing, which would be, I guess, to the north of your driveway, that area at least highlighted there's no way you're going to be able to fit 25 cars there. Now, if that went all the way up to, I believe you have a, another more modern barn uh, on the north side of your property, if I remember correctly. Um, I should have, uh, that, that's an excellent point. What I actually should have done is when you do come into the driveway, the parking that, uh, that, um, that is highlighted in yellow was on the right, but you can actually park cars on the left side of the driveway as well as in the driveway or south and in um, behind the house itself um, there is uh, we do have a gravel parking that fits actually two cars and they can double up in four so um, to be honest with you 25 would be pushing it I think 20 would be more comfortable and if the board decided that 20 cars would uh, with the with the extended prop property I would limit it to 20. If you want to limit it to 15, I'll limit it to 15, and they have to use all side parking. So the other question I have, um, the contract says no more than 25, you have to uh, and off site parking, and this is where I'm a little confused in the contract. Is are you providing the off site parking? No. The transportation? No. 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 So your the client itself has to provide the off site parking. So whatever where they can find. Um, Parking. Uh, the town has parking all over. It's parked all over the place. Thank goodness. And um, but they have to su supply a shuttle service. There are some ways that I've been to actually. They don't want you on the property, but they actually would meet in the parking lot or in a park. And there's a shuttle service that takes you to and from. That runs. That runs maybe one hour or two hours or something. I've been to maybe two weddings like that. Yes. And listen, um, I'm sure we've had a number of calls where. Uh, going back where that was, uh, you know, a hindrance. Nobody wants to have shuttle service. So it's going to be limited use. It's, you know, mostly 25, 30 uh, people have a small party and, and things like that. You know, the barn was built in 1900, and how this came about is that 
um, my, uh, my son at that time. Um, we had, of course, a wedding on his property. There was only about 25 people there. And uh, that's how this, this actually came about. The wedding planner said, gee, this is such a beautiful property. You should think about renting it out to parties. So I didn't give it a thought until about a year later. And then I said, this is something what we want. But the barn is a, an historic barn. It was uh, awarded uh, an award by the Webster um, um, Historical Society uh, all over by the museum. And um, if you haven't been in the barn, I renovated it. It's, it's absolutely a beautiful work of art. Whoever built that is just incredible. And just to let it sit there and not be appreciated <coughs> is a shame. As a matter of fact, it was featured on Channel 10. Who coach? Is that the gentleman's name? On Channel 10, how do you pronounce his name? Kuchko. Kuchko. Uh, Kuchko actually came on the property and actually took some photos of it. And um, he was impressed and he actually put it on Channel He featured it on Channel 10. And the bomb was also featured in the Webster uh, magazine on the front page. And Tom Marley, who is a barn guy who photographs bonds all over the country, all over all, um, all over New York State, actually put a beautiful picture of the barn. So it's, it's such a very picturesque place. So you just want to share it. You know, if we could make a couple of dollars on it, fine. And if we don't, that's fine. Happy to leave it. <laughs> no pressure. Try to be as honest as I can. The um, bar itself, and I remember correctly reading through the contract, there's no water use, there's no... They have to supply, there's no, there's no water, there's no bathroom. They have to bring, uh, when they had the uh, wedding, they had these nice water potties that you put in the back of the house that you can't see actually from uh, the road. They have to bring all the bottled water. Um, any liquor, they have to have a licensed liquor license on the premises. Um, they have to have a show ID. Um, like I said, the contract is about that big. You know, it's pretty, pretty. Um, I, I read it. So I, yeah, we were pretty. Um, pretty thorough. Pretty thorough. I'm curious to hear what the uh, public comment is. So uh, at this point in time, uh, <coughs> this up for public comment. If you care to speak for or against this application, if you could step up to the podium and state your name and address, please. Good evening, Chair and members of the board, ladies and gentlemen. My name is Elvin Tripp, and I live at 378 Webster Road, directly across from the uh, party bar. And I've been there for 34 years, 48 in, in total, in the town of Webster. The, uh, I was a park supervisor, and I've had many experiences with both good parties and bad parties. I'm also on the board of directors for the uh, Webster Union Cemetery, and I know the uh, chair sent a letter to the board with his concerns about parking and people walking through the cemetery. And I myself have concerns about uh, the noise levels from the party when, when you're putting a loved one to uh, in the grave, right in the cemetery, which is right next door. The other thing with, with the increased traffic is there's there's burials possible every single day of the, of, of the, of the week. And there's big processions and cars are passed by house in, in a line slowly turning into the cemetery itself, which can be a rather hazardous on that road because they, people have been driving it crazy there. I'm essentially against the, the Red Barn Special Events Permit. In my experience, I've only had special events per, uh, permits per each event, so I knew what was going on. This is, this is like more of a blanket order to cover the entire season. Is it a permit or a variance on, on, the, on the zoning? Uh, it's a special permit. 
not a special event permit. And a special permit can be conditioned by, by the board. It's not a variance. It's not a variance. It can be revoked at any time. And, and, and last year, when I was I was living there, uh, there were two weddings and one graduation party. I missed the second wedding because I was up in the Adirondacks camping. The first one wasn't bad, but the graduation party there, there was cars everywhere. It, it was it was a, it was a disaster as far as parking on the side of the road. The, uh, the noise pollution, I, I've said that before, about the cemetery having, having a burial there with a party going on next door, which be, would be a, a major distraction. And to the neighbors, as far as that goes. The, uh, there's the, the parking in, at Rogers Farm is, is, as you know, very limited. And it, it's, it's, it's not unusual when somebody comes late, if they miss the shuttle bus, to park anywhere they can, which is on the road. I, I, there's going to be special police. Is, it, is the, the road going to be posted with no parking signs, in front of, especially down in front of the cemetery? And I'm, the other concern I have is the uh, value of our property. If this is a commercial enterprise, and the price list is right on the website, uh, I, I know if I would have moved in, I, I moved in in, in uh, 89, I wouldn't have bought the property if I would have known it was a party house across the street. Not at all. I, I, I moved out of the city if for, if to come to Webster to live in peace and quiet in the country. And that's about it. Thank you. Thank you. Oh, no, we're still open for a public. Oh, I apologize. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Hello. Uh, I'm Chairman. I'm um, Mark and Kathy Morris from the 362 Webster Road, across the street from the proposed uh, barn. So, we just don't believe a commercial activity like this belongs in a residential area. <coughs> um, in the summer, we like to sleep with our windows open, and if there's the occasional graduation party at Woodhall, you can hear it. And this is going to be much closer. So, we have concerns around noise, the lights, and the traffic. The traffic on our road is crazy. This is just going to add to it, and I think put some people at risk if, if they've got a lot of folks going in and out of that location. So those are our main concerns, you know. Noise, detracting from the character of the neighborhood, right? The neighborhood was established as a residential area, and, um, you know, we just think it's going to be a big detraction to the neighborhood. So yeah. this is... The I mean, it's started operation in 2019. My understanding, I think what I heard is that the applicant recognized after an event or maybe two that the parking situation was going to become an issue and maybe he strengthened up his contract and, and limited it to 25 cars for on-site parking only. Um, if that is the case, and that's policed very well, 25 cars on Route 250 is pretty much nothing, right? Would you agree to that? Sure. So, I agree. so let's take the, the traffic out of the equation because that to me is not, it's not even relevant and if it's a police fault. So help me understand beyond the, the, the traffic, is it cars parked in his lawn? Is it, when you say light pollution, I believe there's many outdoor lights there or what I would call bright lights, it's, it's more toned down. What, what do you mean in terms of light pollution? Just from the traffic, cars in and out. From the 25 cars? Yeah. 
Now, I just want to make sure I understand your location. You're at 362? Yes. So, um, across the street from the cemetery, and about three doors down, and right. across the street from the road. Right. We can see the barn line of sight from our living room window. So we would just prefer not to have extra noise is the main thing. I guess what I'm hearing is it's a residential district and you don't yeah. have to stay up. Like yeah. I'm interpreting for you. Yeah. Um, okay. yeah. That's the main thing. Go ahead. I would like to add to Mr. If um, it took a fireman to come and suggest that he needed to have a variance to have parties. His son-in-law is a fireman. So he should have been aware of that it needed to have a special permit. Um, he should have been aware of special safety conditions that he all of a sudden became aware of later. That's a big question. Also, during the summer, um, addressing that there was no complaints when there was parties before. There are graduation parties one weekend um, here and there on 250. So it is common to see one or two houses that have cars parked. So to complain about one party was not really uh, obvious at that point. But if this is gonna be every single weekend, maybe twice a weekend, it is going to be an issue to the neighbors. Um, the noise level is going to be a concern to us. And again, it's, it was established as a residential area, not a commercial area. So the applicant had stated that uh, he, his contract and, and his time period for these events is, I believe, April 1 to October 31. Um, if this, if this board were to move forward with the approval or issuance of a special permit and limit it to, let's say, six events during that window, is that something? How do you feel about that? You know, who knows what's going to happen in those six events, but I think some sort of limitation might be a step in the right direction, but still. The board needs to be able to respond to complaints about individual parties. Well, let's board. clarify, this board is not going to respond to complaints. So, oh, I'm that sorry. would be, I'm sorry. That'd be but, a couple of other however, town entities. If complaints are live, I, I right? Yeah. Yeah, I don't expect you to come over and show it. No, I, I don't know if these folks realize that this use permit is subject to Reviewed by this board, Understood. maybe maybe after a year or whatever whatever the board decides. Yeah. And if the neighbors are in complaint, that's a heck of a motivation for Mr. Off to run a good operation. Because obviously he doesn't want to upset the neighbors. So um, even if he does receive the permit, it's subject to a new location. So that's that's important. Right, I understand that. So I'll address the limiting it to six events. I still think that that sets a very bad precedence. It was a residential neighborhood. I've lived there 19 years. I've seen the changes. Why should a residential neighborhood now serve one person, change the whole dynamic of the area? Well, let me ask this question, maybe also for the first gentleman that came up and, and spoke. This was in operation in 2019, and I asked Mr. Artusa if there were any complaints, and there weren't one complaint that was fielded by the town. Did I, did I understand that correctly? Yes, that's correct. How, how come, if you live right across the street, and you live directly across the street from this, how come you never complained about this, knowing it was a residential district? I personally, if so, have a neighbor that started throwing events in their barn, probably would have said something to the town, What's going on? Why are we in 2023? And now there's a concern over this. I'm confused. So we assumed, we assumed it was his family who was in there. 
He's had five events. There's no signage outside. No, uh, if you're going to speak, you need to step up to the podium. So, on that, have you opened up to people that were in? No, I was generally. <coughs> we were unaware that he was even going to make this an event party bar until one of our neighbors came and told us. So, the, the two parties that we noticed there, we thought they were family. As a matter of fact, we know his son-in-law got, mar got married at that bar. So, how would we know that it now has become an event bar? There are graduation parties around. I think you see my point. But if this happens every weekend, oh, I, every I weekend now, I, it's a lot I different. I wouldn't want this happening every, every weekend either. I understand. Okay, we understand your points. Thank you very much. Okay, next, please. Please state your name and address. Good evening. Uh, my name is Mitch Daly. I'm the homeowner at 1340 Sage Brook Our property is located directly behind 375 Webster Road, so our backyard uh, completely abuts that property. I'm here to express my opposition to the application for the special use permits for a special event space at 375 Webster Road. As the board is aware, 375 Webster Road is zoned within the R1 single family residential district. Within that district, there are nine permitted uses. Um, two of them, communication towers and bed and breakfasts, are permitted on the issuance of a special use permit by the town and planning boards, respectively. Uh, permitted uses do not include special event spaces by special use permit or otherwise. Uh, in fact, special use permits uh, for special event spaces do not exist within the town code. Um, we contend that the Zoning Board of Appeals lacks the original jurisdiction to grant said permit as this is not expressly delegated in the town code. Additionally, uh, we would argue that this application constitutes a change of use on a state road which should have triggered a review by the New York State Department of Transportation. Now, I don't know if that's happened, but it certainly wasn't in the application um, materials, uh, which would have to be done to assess any impact on Route 250. Um, also, General Municipal Law 239M would require this application to be submitted to the county as a change of use on a state road. Uh, as of our attorney's last check with the county, this had not been done, which would also prevent the board from granting this permit at this time. Um, setting aside our questions about the authority of the zoning board in this issue, um, I think the application also fails to meet the standards that are outlined within uh, the zoning code. Um, our neighbors spoke to it to some degree, but you know, standard one states that uses will not interfere with the reasonable use of adjacent properties. I think we can objectively argue uh, that having events within view and earshot of our back and front yards for seven months out of the year could have a reasonable impact on the enjoyment of our outside spaces. Standard four states that the proposed use will not interfere with the preservation of the general character of the neighborhood in which it, the use is to be conducted. Um, as mentioned before, our neighborhood is a residential neighborhood. It's quaint, it's quiet. The entire reason we brought our home is because of the privacy and the quiet that it affords us. The applicants in the material say that the noise will kept, be kept below 60 decibels and will not be heard beyond the boundaries of the property. Um, 60 decibels is conversation level. Um, it seems unlikely that at weddings and parties with guests and music playing, um, that volume would stay below that level and not go past uh, the boundaries. Um, in the application, and this has been mentioned already, uh, the events are going to be posted over a seventh month period that the property accommodates, I know they said 25, but apparently 20 uh, cars in a lot, but feel the need, uh, or they would be required to have additional shuttles to bring guests in. Um, I don't think that it's conceivable that events of that scale, up to 85 people, as previously mentioned, um, over an extended time frame, and as a comment we just made, um, you know, wanting to be done every weekend if possible, um, it's impossible to think that that wouldn't disrupt the general character of a residential neighborhood. Um, I believe it's clear that not only does this application not meet uh, the standards that are outlined within uh, the zoning code, um, but the, this board doesn't have the jurisdiction to grant said permit. Um, as I alluded to before, um, we have already retained counsel. Um, and should this permit be granted, uh, we will seek to commence judicial review um, through an Article 78 proceeding. Uh, 
we feel we need to do what's necessary, necessary to maintain uh, the character of our neighborhood, um, something that this board uh, can easily do uh, by denying this permit. So, thank you. How long have you lived at your place? Um, we've lived there 10 years. So you were there in 2019 when these events occurred? Uh, the joint events that you mentioned? Yes. Yeah. And no issue from those three months? I mean, we could hear them, yes. But if you're asking, are we call the police? No. Could the applicant please, uh, is there anyone else uh, care to speak for against this application? So no, we're going to close the public comment portion of this meeting. We're going to turn it back to the board and the applicant, if you could uh, step up. Um, out of curiosity, knowing that you've got neighbors at uh, Sagebrook Way, Webster Road, uh, a couple of them have, have um, stepped up uh, to the podium and spoke this evening that are in objection to this. Um, I, I'm just curious why you would want to entertain this type of venue in a residential district. Um, uh, Dave Bard, who's our neighbor, I actually live right next to Dave. As I mentioned, um, I had approached him, and uh, he was actually at the uh, graduation party we have, and he's been there since we've had the five parties, and he's never expressed. And there is a neighbor on the corner of Stagebrook that I did give you a letter for him, a young couple that's right on the corner of State Brook, um, who has no objection to us having, which I provided a letter to the, uh, the barn. Um, I know it's, uh, when I tell you that we don't want to rent this every single weekend, because we certainly like our privacy ourselves. Um, so I can assure you, um, whether it's in the contract, if the town would like, uh, to limit the amount of parties I would have, I would be more than happy to do that. Because this is not something that, uh, um, how can I say this? It's not something I'm looking to make a living on. Yeah. It's more for the enjoyment of the property. And like I said, three of the times that we rented it was, was for a charity event. And if, I could, and if I could give it to a charity event once a month, I'd be more than happy to do so. Two th things uh, come to my mind. We uh, dealt with a, a very similar issue on uh, Lake Road. I'm going to guess um, Ms. Bola, you were here at the time, and maybe Mr. Barone. It was called the Webster House. Oh, and the uh, Webster House, it was a little bit more than a bed and breakfast, and it turned into uh, a party house. Uh, and they held a lot of events there. And it became a significant nuisance to the community and into that area in particular and did end up resulting in multiple calls, if, if I remember correctly, uh, to the town uh, complaining about uh, the events that were taking place in this residential district event. We'll call it an event this summer. Uh, so that's one comment, because we do have a, a little bit of, of uh, history there on, on such a Can we do shut them down right. based on the impact of it? Correct. Secondly, I am quite fearful of the precedent that this would set in the town of Webster. Um, whether it's a larger lot at four acres or it's a smaller lot at one acre or a half an acre, um, to have recurring interest in special permits being granted by this board for these types of activities. I personally live on a large lot in a large lot community of three acres and pretty much everybody in that development has full barn buildings, and I personally would say, are you kidding me if somebody came in and wanted to hold an event center on their property in my development? So I feel for the neighbors in terms of what they uh, would like to see in, in their area, in the area, their envelope that they live in. Um, I think it would s send a significant message to the town and set a precedent that me personally, as a zoning board chairman today, am not really interested in, to be quite honest with you. But um, I will turn it over to the other members of the board for their input and opinions.
No, I, I, I agree. I've driven down 250 when there was a party there, and cars lined both sides of it. Um, I can only imagine that, and I do also live in a, a large lot area. Um, pole barns on everybody's property, so I completely agree with everything you're saying. Um, you know, looking at the application itself, the 25 cars, I don't see it feasible on that property in of itself, being that there's no water usage, um, raises concerns of sanitary uh, concerns for me uh, on the property. Yes, I understand that you can bring in quarter johns and other things. There, there's a slew of concerns that I have, and for me, if I was on that property line and I drove that neighborhood this weekend and you can see that barn, you can see the ponds from every one of the, the immediate neighbors. Um, and whether it be weddings, whether it be graduations, if there's a DJ, that noise is going to travel regardless. So being a residential, I, I, I would have significant concerns. And then what precedent does it set moving forward? I, I, I see. I see how you've tried to restrain things in the contract, and I appreciate the effort that went into this contract. But at the end of the day, who's going to police this contract? You? Are you going to go out there with a noise dosimeter to see if you exceed 60 decibels? Are you going to be the one that is telling them that there's 26 cars when 25 are allowed? And then how are you going to make sure that they remove that one car from the property? Um, nine o'clock comes around, maybe you're at a friend's house or you're in, in the house and now it's 9.30. Who's, who's constantly policing this? That, that's another concern that I have because there are a lot of restrictions in this contract and you know, it takes significant effort to, to police everything that you've done in here um, in a residential district. Mr. Barone or Ms. Wall? I know. Uh... We have a lot of neighbors that back up to us, and I actually enjoy them when I hear neighbors have a party. Being that contrary, I actually like hearing people have fun. I enjoy it. But <laughs> what you said is true. Uh, I, I was a little concerned myself about the sanitary condition. You have 60 or 80 people with the outhouse. Women don't really like using an outhouse. <laughs> That's right now. Uh, It's a, it's, a, it's a tough one because if the gentleman said he belonged to the Lions Club and he said, the guys come out, come out over my bar and we're going to have a get together there, that's just a social meeting. It's not business. And if that was the case, then I don't think he would stop it. But when he's getting money for what he's doing, now it becomes a business. And uh, he would be motivated to, although he says it's more of a hobby than a business or a Let's face it. Once word gets out, this could grow. It could grow substantially. So, uh, I I uh, I understand what the neighbors are, are feeling. So, we're 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 in a balance. I understand what this gentleman is feeling. I understand what the neighbors are feeling. What we have to do is good for the town in general. So I have to do it. And, and to that point, I mean, there is a website. There is pricing. Right, so it is a business. Right? I mean, all for I know the gentleman mentioned um, charity events. I'm all for charity events. Um, you know, they're typically much more subdued than graduation parties, and some ones I've been to. Um, but it is already a business. Right? There's, there's a website. There's pricing. There's right? it already. Is. So it's not. Yeah. I agree with uh, all the board members' uh, comments. Uh, specifically, Mr. Barones he was uh, talking about if you belong to the club, what's the stop? At what point, and I don't know if he can answer, we're not going to answer that tonight, because if, if he wanted to just let charitable organizations use his facility for free, the, 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 the lack of sanitary facility in the running water toilet or even the fact that the food catering has to be brought in and has to be a cater factory. You can get that readily out of North Bounds Park and in those same uh, bathroom restrictions. Uh, if, you, if you did it when the bathrooms were locked uh, prior or post-season, uh, 
So that doesn't bother me as much as, as you said, the, the residents' noise. Because you did buy a residential area, there is that expectation that it's going to be used in a residential manner. So, I mean, I'd be all for, I don't know if, like I said, we have the ability to do that, but you know, if you wanted to let organizations use it at no cost, which he's doing now anyhow, is there a limit? I don't, I don't know what the law is, but you know, that we, at what point is it in a business if you're not charging, you know, uh, is there anything to do that to make sure that we're respecting residents, but also allowing him to use his property the way he wants to use it without without disturbing his neighbors. I guess I, from a ZBA standpoint, I I might suggest to you to go to the town and see if there are other avenues to pursue this venture. But at this point, this evening. I'm not willing to vote in favor and condition a special permit. Me personally, I will not speak for the other board. Well, and if I look at it, um, the town allows minor and major home occupations. Does this look like a major home occupation where you're not using the home, where you're using the building on the premises? It's not using equipment that is out of the ordinary for the home. Um, I think the lack of sanitary facilities probably will limit a lot of functions. I'm certainly not going to rent it for <coughs> my son's wedding. Um, is it something that you would rent for, I don't know, Cub Scout? I don't even know. A bunch of little boys together, whatever. Um, but, but there are home occupations that are permitted. The special permit is the avenue that allows a, home, a major home occupation to be conditioned and allowed in a residential area. So, could it be construed as that? Is there a definition of major home occupation? Yes, there's a section of the code. I'm still in chapter 225, so. <laughs> My recommendation to you is to go back and uh, possibly look into other other options in terms of you know, the, the town town code. Uh, maybe chat with uh, Mr. Artuso again. But um, unless somebody else is willing to make a motion, I don't know. we can table it. We cannot deny it. Table, so you won't have to reapply and do some investigation. Um, you know, to be perfectly honest with you, and I think I'm speaking for my wife, as much as I would like to have it now, I do respect my neighbor's opinion, especially Denny, who lives across the street from me. I respect the chairman and the board members who, who uh, gave advice. So I would like to withdraw my application for the benefit of my neighbors and the benefit of the board. I certainly don't want the town of Westford to go into any legalities because my wife and I decided I'd move on. So I respectfully like to rescind my motion and let it go. I highly respect your comments. I think that's a uh, stand-up position and I commend you for that. Thank you. Thank you. Okay, uh, let's move on to the first schedule item, G&H &G -G Auto Sales. Thank you. I appreciate your opinion. Early. Believe me. Thank you.
I don't.
This meeting is open to anyone wishing to speak for or against this application. No? Are you here for the hot dog cart? <laughs> <laughs> well, you should have brought it. <laughs> I don't want to hold you to it. I tell you what, if I get the permission, you guys come down to the park now. We're going to have to pay for the hot dog. But you're going to have to pay for the hot dog. Submitted two sheets, so it's on the backside. Gotcha. Right. 
to get the sand through last month. And uh, they couldn't act on the parking because obviously we needed the variance. So we'd have to go back to the planning board for site plan approval. And I did receive comments prior to that from town staff. And uh, they'll, we're going to have to embellish the site with some landscape. <laughs> I was there, is it Sunday? So we definitely agree with that. Yes. Um, and yeah, I agree with Mr. Rule that uh, I drove by my house, the corner lot. Right. It's not the corner lot. Where is it? Uh, I can appreciate it. The blue yeah. sign did, definitely didn't help us. Self-contained, or I got my own water. I got in my own garbage pail. I bring 
everything's there. You know, I even bought a refrigerator for the back of my truck for the food won't be in a cooler, so it stay frozen. And, you know, it's all frozen. I, actually, the prices went down from the menu because I flew by I, last year. I, I used to buy uh, grass-fed beef. Of course, they don't sell it no more. So now I buy a restaurant quality, so hamburgers are going to go down $2. $2? <laughs> $4 for a hamburger? No, $2 less. $4? Less. $4. Wow. So instead of, you know, it's that, that's how much more the grass-fed beef was. I mean, it was definitely a lot better than hamburger. But I also got a lot of complaints for the price. So, anyways, let's go down a little bit. Uh, is the steak sandwich down four hours? <laughs> <laughs> actually, actually, no, I, that's the same price. Same. Eight dollars. Eh? Spaghetti uh, should go down a dollar. The Swigels gave me a better deal on Swigels. I mean, my hot dogs are Swigels, and my jumbo hot dogs are made by Kirkland. They taste Kirkland, and you know they're, they're Costco. It's the same one you buy at Costco, you know, for there to eat. So between the hours of 11 and 3? Yeah, lunch hours and maybe depends how it goes. I like to maybe go longer if I have to. But I'm, I'm a 62 year old guy. I want to be to stay outside. <laughs> Based on that, it looks like you're uh, taking two parking spots, one for the park, one for the Yeah, one for the truck, one for the car. I mean, I could go in the grass, but I don't think, uh, I don't think that'd be proper. Yeah. I guess my only question is, um, you know, what, what are the limitations to this? Not to him specifically, but you just mentioned that another person came in and inquired. To me, it seems like there would be identified spaces that would be available in this domain yes. that are approved, pre-approved, and there's some kind of application process for it. Yeah. Now, I don't think I, we probably don't have an issue providing the letter, but this is a much bigger issue than this one part. Because once one person does it, typically you're going to do it. And I'm pretty sure this board in the future does not want to approve every person that comes in front of it. So if this is the process that has to take shape tonight, this should not be the process that occurs for the next one. I agree. <laughs> And I'm not talking, I'm not, I'm not, don't take my words directly towards you, but I'm just saying this can't be a process. You'll have to bring in samples. <laughs> I wonder if I knew I was going to be the last guy who would have brought it somewhere in, so. I have to talk to you, sorry, go on. Now, Rodney Point, Rodney Point, let it do a walk. They do the same thing you guys do. So you got to go to the because they have the same problem. They, nobody's ever gone through this. But afterwards, but, but in, in Rodney Point, where I knew, was in last year, I had a private private store, a uh, parking lot, and the owner said I could park there. They, they allowed me parking there. No, not, no hassle, just long as I had insurance. You can see I have insurance. I'll put you guys on if you want. It's a rider on it. And, uh, and that's all I had to do in the round before. Fairport, they will just have to have a, <coughs> I've gone around. Fairport, they have a, you pick a spot in the fire market to see if it'll, it'll be a pool. Uh, but they all have the same thing. They, you know, it's the same. Here, I'm hoping to change the process. The way we do it is that we'll just get a permit for a certain area and it'll be okay. Of course, that have to go in front of the board every year right. and all this. So I think that's, that's the appropriate thing to do. The, the town's got to designate food truck or food cart areas and then have a process to apply that's approved elsewhere outside of this board. Oh, that's it for the new port. My only question slash maybe concern is the location um, across
across the parking lot from where people walk? I I figured I, I, I don't care where I park, to be honest with you. And I figure I'd put it there. So it's out of the way? For, for people that want to really walk, just walk the parking lot, where they don't have to cross over the parking lot. Okay. You know, I figured it's more courteous for the other people to park next to them, more towards the park instead of getting back in the park. I mean, I think we'll in front of it. Once again, I, I don't think we should even be weighing in on this. I well, think that's it's the fire marshal and it's the public, or the parks yes. department. It's not, uh, it's not our decision on where to, to put it. I, I don't even know why this is here. Yeah, I, I understand. <laughs> no, I understand. <laughs> I understand. It's one of these things that should have been addressed years ago. I think at this point in time, the recommendation will be that, you know, my opinion, my opinion recommendation is sure we're fine with it but the fire marshal and public uh, the parks the direct would be the ones that well, identify the location and spot this no, well, not the, parks not the, parks. the parks already approved where I want it to I've already went that's where I started but I started with the parks they were supposed to send you a recommendation letter I don't know if they did yeah that. it's in there uh, it's, it's so in our package so they uh, they, 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 they thought it was a great, great idea to have one there. The county clerks, they thought it was a good idea. Josh thought it was a good idea, idea somewhat too. <laughs> so that's why I'm here. I mean, I won't be here. Best idea ever. Okay, could, so what do you need from, from this board? No formal motion. Um, I think if you support verbally we can capture that Catherine can put together a letter we can have uh, the chairman sign it and then we would provide that to the town clerk so that she'd be um, able to issue the actual permission. I, I support provided the town identifies designated areas in the future for food trucks and food carts and uh, defines a process. Otherwise I, I don't support it because I, I don't I don't think it's appropriate for this board. No, we very much want to formalize a process and create a system. We're just unfortunately not there yet. Yeah. No, I. I no, it's specific for everyone. Well, town uh, health bureau takes a lot of parameters for the way I operate. So, I mean, they come and inspect me a couple, three times a year. They, you know, the food end of it, it's all. It's all done by the health board. I mean, it's not like I'm uh, just out there with a grill cooking hot dogs and hamburgers. I mean, I go through, I went through all the permits, you see, all the permits, the cop insurance, the whole nine yards. Okay. I think we understand what is needed by the, the town, and we'll uh, certainly provide that. Unless anyone has an objection. I think I saw an audience, yes. So I Thank you. Thank you. That concludes this evening's meeting. Thank you for watching. Uh, we do have a meeting that's going to be approved. I believe three of us were at that meeting, so we can proceed. Correct.
served on a board like this before, so it's been a great experience for me. So I'm, I'm not going to say I'm resigning. I'm stuck with it. I just want to thank everybody, um, Kathleen and Josh and, and John, you know, for this, for this constant support. It's been a great experience. You guys have love it. It's been a great addition to the board. Thank you. Thank you. So, so, right in the middle. Okay. I, uh, I just, I, I hear like every other word of people. I, I really got to focus. I took up the general idea, but I, I'm not going to do it. So, unless I can do a great job, I think. You guys, you guys get it. You guys get it. Okay. Thank, thank you. For, but what is the meeting? Actually, Tom was supposed to do a... Today's the last meeting. Doesn't he have to come? Tom was going to...